Houston Endeavor for Doug. We are at the jelly install viewing position. You've got to go for jelly install. Station copy. Copy. As you can see, the space shuttle robotic arm no longer has the logistics carrier. And that report from the crew saying that it's now in position to be able to provide an extra view for the robotic arm operators on the space station robotic arm so that they can begin installing the logistics carrier onto the end of the Kibo laboratory and its new exposed facility. can see here on the right hand side of the screen a closer view of the logistics carrier being moved into place by the space station robotic arm and on the other side of the screen the left hand side is the end of the exposed facility with its birthing mechanism ready to latch on to the logistics carrier. Lots of work going on throughout the station as you're getting a good view up here with pilot Doug Hurley and mission specialist Koichi Wakata in the front here working at the robotics workstation getting ready to release the logistics carrier from the space station robotic arms hold. Flight engineer Tim Coper just coming up behind them to stop and watch for a second. Beyond that, Flight Engineer Bob Thurst is in the background going through an exercise se session on the advanced resistive exercise device and people coming in and out of the airlock to its left as spacewalk preparations proceed. There's Flight Engineer Mike Barrett who is helping out with those preparations inside the airlock. Beyond that you can see the entrance into the Russian section of the station. Tim Coper is the newest member of the Space Station Expedition 20 crew and is actually scheduled at this time to be taking advantage of a little bit of time when he doesn't have other activities to go through what's called crew adaptation. New members of the Space Station crew are given a little bit of time every day for the first bit of their stay to get used to living in microgravity and familiarize themselves with all the different storage places and equipment on the space station. You can see the Canada Arm 2, the space station's robotic arm, moving away now from the logistics carrier driven by pilot Doug Hurley and mission specialist Koichi Wakata. From here it'll be getting set up for its next task, the uninstallation of the integrated cargo carrier on its mobile base. You can see a good idea of the difference in size between the space station's Canada Arm 2 and the Japanese robotic arm on the Kibo laboratory. The Kibo arm is about 37, 33 rather feet long, and the space station's robotic arm is about 57 feet long.
Endeavor ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We certainly are. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for the Twitter, YouTube questions. Hi, Mr. Polensky. I'm Rio Morales, and I'm from New York. I'm 13 years old, and I was wondering, what's the best thing about being in space? Thanks for watching this, and I hope you answer my question. Well, hey, Rio, thanks for asking the question. I'm from New Jersey, so I'm uh, not too far from where you are. And I'm going to show you one of the really fun things about being in space. That's one of them, and of course, seeing the Earth, which is beautiful, and working up here, it's all just fantastic. Hi, Mark Palancy. My name is Cameron. I come from England. My question is, what would happen if you fly into a black hole? been thinking about that a lot, Cameron, and truth is, nobody knows for sure. There's lots of really good theories, and when we understand it more completely, we will understand very much more about the true deep nature of space and time. In your lifetime, hopefully that answer will be a known. My name is Matthew Rice. And I'm from Cary, North Carolina, and my question is, while you're in space, what do you do in your spare time? Matthew, that's a great question. Uh, while we work quite a bit while we're up here, we do get a little spare time, and uh, my favorite thing to do is just to look out one of the uh, windows in the space shuttle or over here in station. Uh, the views are incredible. and. Uh, their uh, once-in-a-lifetime uh, opportunities. So that's what uh, I'll do when I have spare time. Hi, Mr. Polanski. I'm Olivia. I'm from Connecticut, and I'm 15. And my question for you is, do you like your job being an astronaut, and what's it like living in space? Um, if you could answer my question, that'd be awesome. But if you don't, I understand. You've got a lot of questions coming towards you. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. Thank you for your question. It is great to be an astronaut, and it's actually the best job on Earth. Most of us spend most of our time on Earth preparing for the mission and helping out other missions. But when we do get to go, it is extraordinary. It's a real privilege. And uh, living in space is living in a small habitat with a lot of people and sharing that space with them. It's uh, being able to... Uh, live in and work in weightlessness and being able to push yourself off the walls to go places. It's a lot of, not the fact that we get the earth from above. What a beautiful sight. Thank you for you. Hi, I'm Dawn from Indianapolis, Indiana, and my question is, if you're in a spacesuit, especially out on an EVA, and you have to sneeze, how do you deal with that, especially if it splatters? Uh, second part, if your nose itches while you're in a space suit, how do you deal with that? Thank you. Great question, absolutely great question, because I've done it quite a few times, most recently yesterday. And uh, you learn in training to, I don't know how to say this, but aim low off the windshield because it can mess up your view and there's no way to clear it. That's how you do it. Hi, we are in grade 5 and 6 at Cowan Road School, New Zealand. We are learning about sounds in space. We learned that space is not a noisy place as we hear it to be on space movies. 